The Michigan Model by Investors Business Daily, read by OutLoudOpinion.com, April 3rd, 2009. Bailouts. It may no longer be the case that, quote, as GM goes, so goes the nation, unquote, but it's certainly true for Michigan. That's not very good news for Michiganders who are leaving the state in droves. Michigan has desperately tried everything to revive its once prosperous economy, to no avail, sadly. Even its classy ads featuring actor and Michigan native Jeff Daniels touting the state's many wonders haven't helped. Today, Michigan's 12% unemployment rate is the highest in the nation and likely to go higher. Meanwhile, a Detroit News series notes that 109,000 more people left Michigan last year than moved in, four times the level of 2001. Another family leaves the state every 12 minutes, and half the graduates from Michigan's fine university and college system leave each year. They're leaving because the economy is imploding. As Michigan's Mackinac Center think tank notes, the state ranked 16th highest in per capita GDP in 1999. Today, it's 41st. From 2002 to 2007, it was the only state to have a negative growth rate, and its personal income growth today is just over half the U.S. average. How did it get so bad? Certainly, the automaker's demise plays a huge role. So does the United Auto Workers Union, which, due to years of gold-plated labor deals, has made it impossible for the domestic industry to make cars profitably in Michigan. That's a big reason why Michigan's economy has been decimated and why U.S. taxpayers ultimately could spend more than $100 billion to bail out GM and Chrysler, and possibly Ford, too. It's also why Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner decided to fire GM CEO Rick Wagoner last week. He wanted accountability. Fair enough. But given Michigan's economic ills and the growing cost to taxpayers, why not fire UAW chief Ron Gettelfinger, too? After all, he and his predecessors are at least as responsible for ruining GM as the company's admittedly inept managers. Don't forget Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They had to be bailed out at a cost of $200 billion last year. Now we see that 2,600 key employees will get $210 million in bonuses over the next 18 months. For what? Don't they deserve just as much public scorn as the AIG execs who took $170 million? And who, with their families, now live with death threats and ongoing crude personal attacks? Curious how the double standard works? If you're in the private sector, expect severe punishment. But if you're an incompetent government enterprise or a union that gives millions to Democrats, your sins are forgiven, or worse, never recognized. America, meet Michigan. You're becoming more like it every day. Copyright Investors Business Daily, read by Out Loud Opinion. For more podcasts, go to ibdeditorials.com and outloudopinion.com.